Second Doctors. Quick video today to show you how to clean these magnetic filters. Now these filters, you get them with the Baxi boilers, um, or you can also buy them separately. So this video is for anybody who wants to clean the filter. You're allowed to clean it yourself, uh, homeowners, landlords, and stuff like that, you can clean it yourself. Now let, let me now show you how to clean these filters. The tools you're gonna need are the tools that you get supplied with the actual filter. So this is to take the lid off here, and then you also get this little small one here. So now, if you don't have this small one, you can also use the back of this basically. It's the same thing. It does the same thing, but it's better if you have both. You're also going to need a bleed key um, and also the bucket. You need a bucket if you're draining the contents. Now, you don't necessarily need to drain the contents when you're cleaning the filter. So I'm going to show you both ways. I'll show you how to clean it without draining and I'll show you how to clean it with draining. The first thing you do, you go to your boiler and you switch it off. You don't want no heating demand or nothing. So go to the fuse spur and switch the boiler off. Once you've done that, you then turn these valves off. You can see they're off because it goes red basically. Red is off, green is on. So that one is still on. So now they're turned off. Once they've turned off, you've got to relieve any pressure in there. So open up your bleed vent. Yeah, a bit of water will come down. That's why you've got your bucket there. So release some of that pressure. Now, if you were draining from the bottom, this is where you would open up this, this knob here now and drain some of the contents. But I'm going to show you f how to do it first without draining the contents. Um, so the first way to do it is you've done that. So once you've done that, you get your key on here and you turn it anti-clockwise that's it simple as that once you've turned it anti-clockwise you open it up and you can see there's a bit of crap in there there's not a lot to be fair then what you do that's the filter basically this is what catches all the stuff here and it catches it onto this plastic thing now now if i carry it like this uh, along someone's house there's a chance that this sludge would fall onto the carpet so what I always do, I always leave the filter in there like that and I'd carry it like this because the, the magnetic particles are going to be stuck to the magnet. Once I take it off, it will just it will just fall off. Okay, so the way to clean the filter is put the filter to the side. You've got your blast plastic base now. So make sure you get take the filter off the actual plastic bit and just render under a tap. You can also open the bottom bit, clean it like so. That is now clean. What I also suggest is you clean this off with some tissue. So the filter has now been cleaned. So we could potentially just pop this back in now and turn it back on. But for you guys who want to drain the contents of it, say if you want to add inhibitor to the system, which I do recommend, and I'll show you now how to do that. Um, so what you do is, if you've done the first step, clean the filter and stuff like that, you then get your little key, or again, you can use the bottom of this if you haven't got it, or some script grips, spanners, anything like that. And basically turn this anti-clockwise. So that's it now, it's fully it's fully drained and there's nothing inside. There's nothing inside, it's fully drained. Uh, what you need to be aware of when you're putting them back in. Um, they're usually fine, but you also you always look out for these two little rubber washers in there to make sure they're intact and they're fine. Because if they ain't, just replace them. Put that back in. That's been drained. We've put that back in, and you know you just remember, guys, that it's, they're rubber washers, so they only need to be hand tight. So you literally, that's it. Yeah, don't don't go crazy and start over tightening on because that's when you're going to start to get leaks. Now is the best time to put an uh, inhibitor back into the system. Now I use the same brand, AD. You can use anything you want. A full bottle won't fit, so just fit in whatever you can. 
and what I recommend is just going half or three quarters of the way because if you go the whole way when you put the filter back in it will over it will spill over basically so what we do we put the inhibitor in we put the lid back on okay so before we put the lid back on actually what well, guys what I want to show you guys there's a rubber seal in here as well so you look at this rubber seal to make sure it's in general good condition if it isn't and you get your lid leaking this is usually why so you can get free um, filters from uh, AD rubber washers I mean from AD they'll send it to you for free if it does leak so you want to close it now I don't even use this tool to close. I only use this tool to open up the filter. You don't need to use it to close it. You're going to over tighten it. So what I do usually do is get my hand, get it tight, hand tight, and I'm done. That's literally it. I've closed it. Once I've done that, remember to close your bleed vent. Done. Once you've closed your bleed vent, you're, you're confident it's done. Give it a little wipe down. So now you're gonna you're gonna turn the water back on now. Uh, you want to make sure you've got no leaks. So we're going to turn it back on now. So you get your little twisted tool, spanner, grips. And you turn that back on. And then you turn this one back on as well. So once you've turned it back on, you're going to get your bleed key again. Now you want to relieve some of the air from the, from the filter and fill it with water basically. Open it slightly, slowly until you hear air. Once you see a little bit of water coming out from there, you're done, pronto, you're done. You then come up to the boiler and you're gonna have lost a bit of water in the, um, the pressure into the system. Top the boiler pressure back up to 1.5. So now you've topped the water pressure back up, you've got no leaks. You can then proceed to turning the fuse spur back on, turn your heating system back on. Again, check again for any leaks. If you do have leaks, you know, again, tighten it again with your hand. If you need a little, little bit of leverage, use this tool. I've never had to use this tool. Um, I don't like over tightening it because next year when you come back to it, it's going to be really hard to get it back off. You don't really need to, as you can see, there's no leaks to it. So AD usually give 10 years warranty with these filters if they're registered. Now, if your filter has been registered, what that means is if it leaks, they'll send you some filters and stuff like that out. So if the bottom nut leaks, you've tried everything, PTFE, you've tried tightening up and nothing's happening, They'll send you some new O-rings out if, if, if it's leaking. And also that top little washer here, basically, the O-ring. So if that's leaking and you've tried everything and the lid keeps leaking, contact AD. They'll send you a repair kit out. It's so simple. You've seen how to take it off, change it, put it back together. Come to the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any other filters you want me to talk about. There's other ones out there, Fernox TF1 and stuff like that. These are my preferred brand, hence why... I made a video of it now click the bell notification if you want to if you want to keep up to date with knowledge i'm always releasing videos have a look at my other videos job done